This video is specifically for people looking to get a portion plates for a semi truck. Hey guys, Daniel here from the Truck Insurance Channel. In this video, I'm talking about all the requirements for going and getting your IRP account set up and getting a portion plates. If you're looking for anything else, we'll have other videos out about this for like hot shots trying to get a portion plates, or if you're in that like small segment of box trucks that need a portion plates, we'll have future videos about that too that uh, we'll reference below later on. Getting an IRP account set up is probably the most stressful thing in setting up a trucking company. The requirements are like so tedious and the real problem is we're dealing with government employees so it's kind of like low to minimum no effort type of people that don't really want to help you just show up clock in clock out type of thing so i really understand if you end up hiring someone to do this there's tons of people that will help you uh, set up your irp accounts and even go do it for you uh, depending on where they're based uh, like at the dmv office but if you want to do it yourself follow along in this video i'm going to explain everything first thing i got to say is Every state can be a little bit different on the requirements and like the forms that you got to fill out, but IRP is pretty general across the country, like no matter what jurisdiction you're in. I'll run through the requirements here. Just know that they could vary a little bit, but for the most part, they're going to be pretty much the same in, in every state. The first thing that's going to cause the most problems is not having everything in the same state. Your driver's license, your business registration, the truck, like if it's registered somewhere else currently, you're switching it over, anything like that, and your insurance policy. If everything's not in the same state, this is where it's really gonna hit you. Don't get your IRP account set up if you're like a new venture until you've got your authority application done, so you've got your MC and DOT number, you've done your BOC3 filing, and you've got insurance in place and gone active. That's actually part of the requirements. You have to have active authority status. Your business registration, has to show active on the Secretary of State website that you're applying for the IRP account in. So like, if you've set up anything in a separate state, you've got a virtual address, anything like that, again, this you're gonna be screwed here. There are some scenarios where you could have like a foreign entity filing in another state, but that's like, ugh. Stay away from that, especially if you're a new venture, okay? You're, you're only gonna limit yourself, if not make it impossible. The big part of this is proof of residency, right? So even if you're applying as a business and not an individual, you still have to have residency documents for your business and yourself. Those include property tax bills, state income tax returns, a utility bill can count for residency documents, but not a cell phone bill or an internet bill. They, they won't accept those in, in pretty much any state. You could have a W-2 with the state listed on there. They will accept that in some states. If you're in a state that has concealed carry permits, those count too, uh, that's not every state, just depends. And of course your driver's license. Again, you want your driver's license in the same state as your policy, all that. Your business registration, let's talk about this for a second. Your business has to be registered in the state that you're trying to register your IRP account, right? You could have your business registered in multiple states if you're trying to do something there. Again, try and stay away from that, keep things simple. The person at the DMV that's gonna help you set up your IRP account is gonna check the Secretary of State website to make sure your business is, is registered and active. Maybe you had an LLC you filed a few years ago and you still wanna use that. If you haven't done an annual like amendment or update, it's not gonna show active. You'll need to do that before you get to the IRP office. It is so important you have everything neatly, nicely organized prior to going to the IRP office because otherwise you're gonna get up there and the person's gonna say, sorry, come back when you're ready. And they won't even tell you what you need to do to get ready in a lot of scenarios, right? Like it's not their job to help you, it's their job to process the paperwork that you submit correctly. And if it's incorrect, they won't submit it. You've gotta have obviously an EIN, your tax ID, that's easy. There's links to everything below. So if I mention anything, check out the description. You'll find links to literally everything you need especially the IRP website's directory, like state-based or jurisdiction-based directory. So you can find out like the exact forms you need for your state, the IRP DMV office. Every state can be a little bit different. So check out that directory. That'll get you exactly where you need to go to find out the information for all this. If you just search like your state, you know, like say you, you search Georgia DMV IRP, well, you're probably gonna see a bunch of ads from service providers. And again, like if you wanna do that, go for it. But if you wanna do it yourself, which I kind of recommend. It's best to know how to do something before you start trying to delegate it, especially if you want to be a, a new business owner, like you want to know how to do everything so your business isn't dependent 100% on other people. That's just my opinion, take it for what you will. So the, the business registration, the EIN, then you're gonna need a certificate of insurance. So obviously you've got your authority set up, you've got insurance in place, that's all good to go and your authority's active. You'll need a certificate of insurance, you get that from your agent. So if that's us, 
We'll provide that for you. We, we do that as soon as we set up your account anyways. You don't have to have a declaration page, but I would take one anyways, just in case, because sometimes people get weird about things. If a COI doesn't look right, then they're gonna immediately ask for declarations page. So it's best to just have more than you need instead of not having something you need and getting denied and having to come back. Uh, a lot of the time you have to drive to an IRP office. A lot of states only have one or a few IRP offices. You might be driving a few hours to get to this office to do all this paperwork. And if you forgot something like, you might have to come back another day. Paperwork you need for your vehicle, you need the title paperwork. If you just recently bought it, you're gonna need a bill of sale. If it's a leased vehicle, you need like the lease agreement or contract. Everything pertaining to you acquiring the vehicle, have paperwork around all that. For the account setup, they're gonna ask you some questions. I've done this and it was kind of scary. <laughs> Uh, they're gonna ask you a bunch of questions and it's like good to go ahead and know like what they're gonna ask and have answers prepared They're gonna ask you about a vehicle number one of the other requirements is the like scheduled one like uh, Stamp schedule one the, the 2290 filing. I have a video linked below and and how to do that check that out That's one of the other requirements. We're gonna talk about in a second But you'll need that and that when you do the 2290 filing they're gonna ask you for a uh, Vehicle number and that's not your VIN number. That's a number you assign to that unit so like it could be 101, it could be 001, it could be one, it could be 10, whatever number you come up with to assign as like a fleet number for that vehicle. They're also like gonna ask about purchase price, purchase date, unloaded weight, loaded weight, so combined GVW, so truck, trailer, and total load. Obviously for most everybody that's gonna be like 80,000 pounds. Number of axles for your truck, if you have a trailer, number of axles for your trailer. All right, back to that schedule one. Made a previous video about how to file your initial 2290, which is your schedule one. It has several names. You need that along with all this other paperwork to go set up your IRP account. Check out that video. It's really quick and easy. It's not near as complicated as you think. You don't need a lot to prepare for that. Uh, but check out that video and you'll have it like in minutes. And last but not least, state specific forms. If you check out that directory down below to get you to the exact website uh, for your state's IRP information, almost all of those have the state forms there so you can download them, print them out, fill them out beforehand and make copies of everything before you go. I know this is all a lot. Once you're done with this, you're gonna get a bunch of forms from the IRP office and have new information to keep up with. Make sure you keep all of that really organized and somewhere you can easily access. If I were you, I would set up LogRock Again, link below in the description. You can store a lot of documents there that you're gonna need in the future, especially come audit time and IRP renewal, if the filings, all this stuff. You want somewhere that you can easily access all of that information, those documents, so LogRock's a good place to get started. If you need help with insurance, obviously give us a call. Number's here. You can email us, schedule calls, whatever fits you best, however you want to communicate with us. If you have any questions, need help. As always, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Check out our future videos. We're gonna have more of this in this like semi-trucking startup series. Be safe out there. See you in the next one.